Randomizing textures in USD is way easier than in Mantra. In the material library, we have to create a material for each texture we want to use. In my case, I have three skin tones and three bottle colors. Let's go to the material library. I'm going to call this body material underscore light, because the first skin tone I have is a light skin. The second is tan, a little darker. And the third is dark the darkest skin. And now the same with the bottle. This will be the blue one, my texture number one. The second one is yellow. And the third one is the red bottle, texture number three. Okay, now I have a material for each texture I want to use in my scene. Go back to the stage. I'm going to press clear to delete all the previous references to my materials and then click on autofill materials to update it. I'm also going to apply the track material to the terrain. Nice, let's focus on the agents now. To randomize textures, we are going to use a node called very material assignment. In the primitives parameter, we put the geometry which in this case will be the default CH36 shape, the agent's body. And you see now that my agent has the texture of the bottle. What the heck is going on here? Well, let's look at the materials parameter. It's set to materials and a few asterisks. In other words, this node is applying all the materials I have here to my geometry. I'm going to change mannequin underscore one to mannequin underscore asterisk so that materials are applied to all the agents. But obviously that's not what I want. I want to apply only the body materials, not the bottle ones. So I'm going to select these materials and drop them in the materials parameter. And that's it. Each agent has now a different skin tone. And for the bottle, I'm going to add another very material assignment node. This time in primitives, I'm going to put the bottle shape. Also applied to all the agents. And the materials will be these three that start with bottle. We don't see any changes in the viewport. So let me turn off the node and turn it on again. But it doesn't seem to work. Even if they say that Houdini 19 is ready for production, there are still some bugs that need to be fixed. The time has come to activate Karma, but where is Karma? Karma is right here in front of you in the viewport. Go to this PERSP menu and these are the renderers that are available in your viewport. Houdini GL is the one we are using right now. And here we have Karma. Oh, look at this. In Karma, we see that the bottle does have a texture. Let's go back to Houdini GL. And now the texture is gone. Well, we can say that the texture randomization works fine. What does not work so well is the Solaris viewport. All right, we just have to add some lights and a camera and we are ready to render. If you already created your lights and camera in the OBJ context, you could use the scene import lights and scene import cameras nodes to bring them here to the stage. In my case, I didn't set them up, so I'm going to create them directly here in the stage. Let's create first a distant light a light that mimics the sunlight. Where is it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'm going to combine this light with the rest of my scene with a merge node. And now let's move it to a good position. I'm also going to rotate it a bit so that it lights up the track and my characters. It looks a bit dark, so let's increase the intensity parameter. Okay, and now for the camera, we'll do the same. Create a camera node, connect it to the merge node. What the? Now my bottles have textures? 
Come on, man! <laughs> Next, we look through the camera, which right now is pointing at the origin, lock it and move around in the viewport until we find a good spot. This is going to be my shot. Awesome! We have a light and a camera. Select the merge node and in the scene graph tree I have a few items now. Cameras is where my cameras are stored with the name $OS, that is the name of the node. In this case camera 1. I also have crowd which is what we've been using so far. The lights, which contains the lights, inside I have my distant light, then the materials and the terrain. All these items together make up my scene. This is the description of my scene. Having the materials, the lights and the camera, we are now ready to render. To render in Karma, we are going to use a node called Karma. Hey, <laughs> Let's connect our scene to the first input. This node, the Karma node, is quite similar to the one we used for rendering in Mantra. Here we choose if we want to render a single frame or a frame range. The output picture parameter is the path where we want to save our render and with what name, the camera we want to use and the resolution. Here in rendering engine we can choose if we want to run Karma at the CPU level, that is using only your processor, or if we want to use the graphics card as well, this XPU. But keep in mind that this XPU rendering in Karma is still in alpha phase, is still being tested. With the pixel samples we control the quality of the render and here below you have more advanced settings. The ones that may be useful for you right now are in the camera effects, the depth of field and motion blur, which come activated by default. If you switch to Karma in the viewport, this is what your render will look like. Well, once you configure the Karma node and you like what you see in the viewport, all you have to do is hit render to disk. 